I ain't nothing like you false prophets. Shalom, good people, and welcome to another episode of Hidden Matter. I am your host, King Yohanan, and today we have a different look. I have a special guest, no other than... Prince Miles. Shalom, everybody. Most like guys bless. My great armor bearer, Prince Miles, who's going to read the scriptures for us, okay? So, what are we going to discuss today? Today, we're going to go over Revelations chapter 1 verse 14. We're going to go up to 12 in that area. We're going to deal with the depiction of Christ. But as we deal with the depiction of Christ, I need you to understand and think to yourself and ask yourself, is knowing that Christ a black man going to give you salvation? So have your question. We're going to go through this spiritually, not carnally. We're going to give you the true understanding what the Lord wants spiritually because he only wants your spiritual oblations. Okay, so let's go where Christ was talking to the lawyer in Luke. All right. Luke 10 verse 25. We're going to go with the lawyer was trying to tempt Christ and see what Christ had to say about that. Read. Luke 10 verse 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said master or teacher. So when it says servants obey your masters in the Bible, it means your teacher. Okay, we're going to deal with that doctrine, kill that doctrine off the top. So he said, master, what should I do to inherit eternal life? How can I get the kingdom of heaven? This is what Christ, what did Christ say? He said unto him, what is written in the law? What is written in the law? How readest thou? How are you reading it? Are you reading it carnally? Or are you reading it spiritually? Because if you're reading it carnally, everything you see in this or, or carnally, what I mean, what we mean by carnally means literal. Like you're literally thinking that God made the earth in seven days. That you're thinking that Christ actually walked on water. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. That's the carnal thinking. That's the major stumbling block upon the Bible and among Christians and other denominations. Okay? So, let's go to Isaiah 55 and 8 and see what God has to say about our thoughts. Because we, we read this all the time, but we need to understand this spiritually in Isaiah 55 and 8. What does Christ mean when he says this? Isaiah 55 verse 8 For my thoughts are not your thoughts Neither are your ways my ways So God says my thoughts are not your thoughts So you thinking one thing when you read the Bible God said that's not what I'm thinking Your thoughts are not what I'm thinking You have to read it how I say do it You can't do it on your own way You got to do it how I say do it To get the understanding Read it again Isaiah 55 verse 8 For my thoughts are not your thoughts Neither are your ways my ways Said the Lord Said the Lord So you got to take that into mind When you're dealing with the Bible Let's go to John 7 38 Let's see what John had to say well, Let's see what Christ had to say about the same ordeal Because he was dealing with this Read John 7 verse 38 So now What we're going to John 7 38 Is to understand Why we're going to Revelations chapter 1 and verse 14 because there's a lot of doctrines going around about Christ being a black man because he had hair wool and, and he had uh, skin uh, as it burned in the furnace but we're going to break that down today so we're going to go to John 7 38 to see what Christ had to say about this read John 7 verse 38 he that believeth on me as the scripture hath said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. He said, who believeth on me, on his teachings, as the scriptures has said. Not something I made up carnally, something I made, I read, not, or I'm coming with a Superman story. He said, what the scriptures said. Read, again. Verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, 
out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So living water is the word of God. You're going to understand the word of God. Out of your belly, the belly is your mind. We're going to go over that in a second here. We go through this precept. So now that we got out of what Christ said, you believe it on me. We're going to go believe it on him by reading what the scriptures say about him in Revelations. So in Revelations 1, in the book of Revelations, John on the Isle of Patmos. So John is having his vision. He's in the Bible, he's meditating, and he's having his vision. So let's see what happened. Let's go to the story of what happened in Revelations. Revelations 1. Revelations 1, verse 1. Huh? The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Uh -huh. And he sent and signified it by his angels unto his servant John. Okay. Verse 2. Who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. So he said, who bear record of the word of God. So he was in the word of God. He bear record of it. He's actually in, he's writing it. He bears record. So he knows what the scriptures are saying. Read. Verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that readeth. You're right now reading the word of God, what John had said on your screen right now. God said, and John said, blessed is he that readeth and? And they that hear his words of this prophecy. And you're hearing the words of the prophecy because I'm breaking the prophecy down precept upon precept. You're blessed. Read. And keep those things which are written therein. You need to keep these things. You need to remember these. You need to write them down. You need to remember them so you can teach them on so the, the teaching can keep spreading and keep going on. So you understand the spiritual understanding so it can consume the earth again. Read. For the time is at hand. It's now is the time. The kingdom of heaven is now at hand. You must repent and start teaching the spiritual law. Let's now, let's deal with Christ. Let's go down to verse 11. Let's go to 10. Stop, I'm sorry. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. Let's get the whole thought. Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. Uh-huh. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Mm -hmm. Verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, Tira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. So John said he turned to see the voice that spake unto him. What was that voice be? Let's see what Christ, because it's Christ that spoke. Let's go to John chapter 18, verse 37. This was Christ dealing with uh, Pilate when he was about to be persecuted. He was being persecuted. So this is what John, this is what Christ said to Pilate. John chapter 18, verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. Christ said, You said it. I didn't say I was a king, but you say I'm a king. Read. To this end I was born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Bear witness unto the truth, and what? Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. My seed hear my voice. Of you of the truth, you understand what I'm bringing to you today, because this is Christ's doctrine. You can see it clear, clear as day. This is what Christ is telling you. His voice is the truth. His voice is the truth. All right? Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha, chapter 1, verse 7, and let's know more about the voice of God. Read. Wisdom of Solomon 1, verse 7. For the Spirit of the Lord fills the world, uh -huh. and that which contains all things have knowledge of the voice. Of the voice. Didn't Christ just tell you? That you're gonna what the voice is is the wisdom, the knowledge of God. You're gonna have the knowledge of God. That's the knowledge of His voice. You're gonna have the knowledge of His precepts. You're gonna have the knowledge 
it's how to break this down precept upon precept. You're gonna have the knowledge of the certain manner and the certain words that are coming in the Bible and you're gonna know how to define them. And you know when you read them, you're gonna know exactly what they mean spiritually, not carnally, all right? Because dude, uh, Moses had this issue, right? Let's go with Moses when he was reminding the Israelites, all right? Let's go to Deuteronomy 4.33. Deuteronomy 4 verse 33. Did ever people hear of the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and lived? Have you ever heard the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire? The voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire. Okay, for a second, let's know what the fire is. We, since we're here, let's get what the fire is. Go up to verse 24. Verse 24. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire. So the Lord thy God is a consuming fire. Consuming is the same as eat. When you consume something you're eating, you're taking it in. So the God is a consuming fire, right? Even a jealous God. That's a big G, not a little G. Meaning teacher. Right? Let's go back down to verse 33 again to find out what the fire was. Verse 33. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire, mm -hmm. as thou hast heard and live? Let's go down to verse 36. Verse 36. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee. So how would you hear the voice of God? By going to the Bible. That's the only place you're going to get the word of God or hear his voice is in the Bible. Read. And upon earth he shewed thee his great fire. So we know what the great fire is, is God. So it's the word of God, the great fire. And thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. Whose words? God's words out of the midst of the fire. We're going to deal with fire in later precepts. We're going to deal with that later. But I want you to hold on what the fire is. Fire is preaching. We're going to prove that later. All right. We're going to go back to Revelations. Chapter 1, verse 12. All right, we got to go back so we can remember the thought so we don't lose our, our, our train of thought. All right, Revelations 1, verse 12. Revelations 1, verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Seven golden candlesticks. Gold is the most pure form of metal, right? It's purified. It's pure gold. You can't get no better than that, right? So it says golden candlesticks. So what are the golden candlesticks? Drop down to verse 20 miles and let's give them what the candlesticks are. Verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Mm -hmm. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. The seven churches. So it's seven different understandings. That's what the seven churches are. Seven different understandings. That's what this is, because each one of these churches had something wrong. They were breaking the commandments some way, shape, or form. And one of them had it correct. So if you had different churches teaching different things in the Bible, that means they had different doctrines. Each church had different doctrines. All right? Read, go back to verse, verse 12. Verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. So if you had seven different understandings, seven different churches, there was one like the understanding of Christ. That's what that means. It's not talking about physical Son of Man. All right, it's a capital S. Because Son of Man is a preacher, is a prophet. That's what the Son of Man is. So it's a big S. So it's one like Christ's doctrine. That's what the Son of Man in this means. So out of the seven different churches of seven different understandings, there was one like Christ. Read. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. So now if you paid attention to my last video on fringes, you understand that garment is your doctrine. All right. Garment is a doctrine. Right. But we don't know what the foot is. So we know a doctrine is a garment. What is your foot? All right, let's go to Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Let's see what the Lord said to do when you come before him. Read. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Keep thy what? Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. And do what? 
and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools for they consider not that they do evil. So he's telling you to keep that foot and keep your doctrine when you come into the house of the Lord. Keep your doctrine to yourself when you come to the house of the Lord. Your foot, your path is your doctrine. That's what it means when you come into the, what the foot means. The foot is your doctrine. Let's go to Psalms 119, 105. Psalms 119, verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. So the Bible says thy word is a lamp. So the word of God is a lamp unto his feet. And? And a light unto my path. And to your path. So the foot is his path. Keep thy doctrine. So the foot in your path is your doctrine. That's what he's telling you. The way you're going. His way. You're going to the way of the Lord. That's the path. That's the foot. Keep your foot. When you come in the house of the Lord, means keep that doctrine that you learned outside from out of the house. That's what he's telling you. All right? Let's deal more with the foot. Let's go to 2nd Ezra 6 and 8. Let's deal more with the foot. 2nd Ezra 6 and 8. 2nd Ezra 6 verse 8. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, When Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held the first heel of Esau. So Jacob's hand held the heel. The heel is part of the foot. So we say the foot is the doctrine. The hand and the foot is the doctrine. So the foot is a doctrine because we've been breaking that down in and, and Ecclesiastes 5 and 1 and Psalms 119 that the word was the light of his path. So the path is on your foot. So now in 2nd Ezra says, Jacob held onto the heel of Esau. Huh, keep reading. Verse nine, for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Okay, so to get the full understanding, let's get the parallel verse. Remember, we're dealing with a foot here. We're dealing with the foot. Let's go to Genesis three, at the verse 18. Genesis three, no, verse 15, I'm sorry. Genesis three, verse 15. Genesis 3, verse 15. And I will put immunity between thee and the woman. So he's talking to Adam. He said, look, hey. No, he's talking to the serpent. Pardon me. He's talking to the serpent who was a defiled teacher. And he told him, he said, hey. He told the serpent, I will put enmity between you and your woman. Me, you and your doctrine. This is what he told that teacher. He said, I will put enmity between you and your, your doctrine. Read and between thy seed and her seed. Thy seed and her seed, the seed is the word of God. So the seed is, what you're breaking down, your doctrines of the word of God is gonna be enmity between that, read. It shall bruise thy head. Bruise thy head, we're gonna deal with the head. I want you to remember, he said, I'm gonna bruise your head. We're gonna come back to head, promise you. And what? And thou shall bruise his heel. And you're gonna bruise his heel, meaning there's gonna be a blemish in that doctrine. So, let's get a perfect understanding. Let's get a parable on this. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. I'm going to give you a parable of what does it mean for Jacob to grab on the Esau's heel, okay? Let's go to uh, Isaiah 34, 16. Read. Isaiah 34, verse 16. Uh-huh. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, No one of these shall fail. No one shall want her mate, for my mouth it hath commanded and his spirit it hath gathered them. So this is a commandment. He says, seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. None of these scriptures gonna fail. None shall want her mate. So why did I go here, Johan? Because I see this commandment get broken every Sabbath. I see brothers out here marrying the Bible with history books with dictionaries, with Wikipedia, with Blue Label. When the Bible says, read the first part again, Miles. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Seek out the book of the Lord and read. So if you're going and you're marrying the, the Bible with history books, Wikipedia, guess what? Who gave you those doctrines? Who gave you that history book? The same man 
that these Israelite so-called Hebrew Israelite camps hate. Because none of them publishing that stuff. They give you the hieroglyphs, they give you all that stuff. They telling you what it is. So you take this picture, you're following his doctrine because that's what he put out in the earth for you to teach. So you're using that and you're marrying that with the Bible when the commandment says not to do that. So you're in sin. I pray you repent and start teaching like he said in the verse, read it again, Miles, loud and clear for them to understand. Verse 16, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No, seek ye out of a history book. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. Seek ye out of the Wikipedia. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. Seek ye out of, out of uh, uh, Columbia history of, uh, of the world. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. Seek ye out of paintings that got whitewashed. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. And do what? And read. And read that. He didn't say to marry that with no other book. He didn't say to marry with a history book. I pray you repent. That is what it means to hold on to Esau's doctrine. You're using, you're on the heel of Esau's doctrine and you're mixing it with the Lord's doctrine. That's what Jacob does. That's what Jacob is doing. Take Esau's doctrine and mix it with the Most High's doctrine. That's what it means. Go back to uh, Genesis 3 verse, was it 15? Please. Genesis 3 verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Between the serpent and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed. And the, the word of God, her word of God and your word of God. And it shall bruise thy head. Bruise thy head. We're going to get the head in a second. And thou shalt bruise his heel. That's how you bruise the heel. Because you're mixing that doctrine. You're following that doctrine. Your hand is on that heel. Following it. Let's go back to Revelations. So now we know what the voice of God is, we know what the candlestick is, and we know with what, where we at? And we know what the Son of Man is, we get down the girdle, right? Read that, go to verse 13. Revelations 1 verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Girdle covers your belly. The belly is your brain. Let's get that. Let's get that. Hold on. Let's go to girdle. Let's go to, uh, let's go to 1 Peter's 1 and 13. 1 Peter's 1 verse 13. Uh -huh. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up the, the girdle is over your mind. Your belly is your mind. He said, we do it again. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Uh -huh. Be sober and hope to the end of for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So the girdle is of his mind. Girdle, what? Didn't, gird, didn't John the Baptist have a bird, girdle? Go to Matthew 3 and 4 real quick. Matthew 3 verse 4. Uh-huh. In the same, John had his raiment of camel's hair. He had a raiment of camel's hair. We're going to deal with hair too. But John had a raiment of camel's hair. Read and a leathern girdle about his loins. He had a leather girdle. He had a leather girdle. So a leather girdle is kind of tough, but is it the best girdle? It's not the best girdle, but it's a tough girdle though. So it's a tough doctrine that, that John had. Read. And a leathern girdle about his loins. About his, lo about his mind. A leathern girdle about his mind. Girdle up the, about his mind, right? Read. And his meat was lotus and wild honey. He had meat. His understanding was of locust and a wild honey. Right? That was the girl. His understanding, what you consume is what you eat. What you eat is how you, what, what you're learning. What you eat is what you're learning. I hope I said that right. <laughs> okay, it's kind of fast, right? I hope I said that right. Okay? So now we got John the Baptist girl. Let's go to Jeremiah. Let's find out the girdle within Jeremiah. Let's see if the girdle is not a doctrine now. It's part of a garment. A garment is a doctrine. Let's find out what the girdle is. It's uh, Jeremiah 13, verse 1. Jeremiah 13, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord unto me, Go and get thee a linen girdle. A linen girdle. But you see, John the Baptist had a leather girdle. All right? But he told him to get a linen girdle. And put it upon thy loins. And put it upon thy loins. 
and put it not in water. Water is the word of God. He says, don't put it in the word of God. Don't put it there. And a, le a leather girdle is not really doing much of nothing. It's not really that strong. Read. So I got a girdle according to the word of the Lord. According to the word of the Lord. A girdle according to the word of the Lord. A doctrine according to the word of the Lord. And put it on my loins. And put it in my mind. Verse 3. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, Take the girdle that thou hast got, which is upon thy loins. Which is upon your mind. And arise, go to Ephrathah, and hide it there in a hole of the rock. He said, go to the Euphrates and... Put it there in the hole of the rock, right? Let's go down. Let's find the unprofitable one. Let's go down to verse 8. Verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, After this manner will I mar the pride of Judah. He said he will mar the pride of Judah. I'm sorry. Go back into verse 7 and find out what was, why it was marred. Verse 7. Then I went to the Euphrates. 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 And digged and took the girdle from the place where I had hid it. Mm -hmm. And behold, the girdle was marred. The girdle was marred. It was profitable for nothing. It was profitable for nothing. Go down to verse 9. Verse 9. Thus saith the Lord, after this manner, will I mar the pride of Judah? Mar the pride of Judah, that carnal understanding. And the great pride of Jerusalem. Uh huh. What is it doing? Why? Why, why are you going to mar the pride of Judah? Verse 10. This evil people, which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their own heart. Making up their own doctrines, read. And walk after other gods. You serving these other gods, these captains, these officers, these, these, these bishops, these, these pastors. You're serving them. Those are the other gods that he's saying. They're all over your posters. They're all on display everywhere. They're more, more they're worshiped more than God is. They, they bow down to, to, to certain to members and leaders of churches more than they bow down to, look to the Lord. You worship at those gods. Read. To serve them. To serve them. And to worship them. Driving them back and forth. And to worship them. To worship them. Shall even be. I heard a brother tell me that a certain uh, bishop was the second coming of Isaiah. I heard that. That's how you worship in these other these individuals. Read. Shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. That girdle, that doctrine is good for nothing. Okay? Now let's go back to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Revelation 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Alright, stop right there. He said his head. What is the head? What is the head of any prophet? Because he said he was son of man. One like the son of man. So if son of man is a prophet, what would his head be? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. That the head of every man or son of man or prophet is who? Christ. Uh-huh. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the doctrine is the teacher. And the head of Christ is God. And the understanding of God comes through Christ. The understanding of Christ and his parables. Read. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered. Having, praying or prophesying. If you're praying or prophesying, he's not talking about an actual head cover. If you cover your eyes, that means you're blind. That means you have no understanding. So if you cover Christ, that means you have no understanding of Christ. That's what that means. Read. Having his head covered dishonoreth his head. That's how you dishonor Christ because you have no understanding. You're not covering yourself with Christ. You're having your head covered. You're covering Christ, meaning you have no understanding of what Christ's doctrine is. Now you're dishonoring him and what he taught. Read. Verse 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesies. Now, currently, they said a woman can't speak in the, can't teach in the church. But it just says here, every woman prayeth or prophesies. A prophesy is to teach. That's what prophesy means. So any woman that was teaching, carnally, your, your doctrine is cut right there. But go back to five again. 
but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered. So her head being the teacher. So why would the woman be uncovered? Read. Dishonoreth her head. She dishonoreth her teacher. Keep reading. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. As if she was in sin. That's what it's talking about. So why would why would it be why would the the woman be uncovered? Why would she? Why does the man not need to cover Christ, but the woman need to cover the man? You need to cover the man. Because if Sharon head is uncovered, that means she's not dealing. He has no understanding. His understanding only comes from not covering his head of Christ, getting the understanding of Christ. That's how he's always covered. So she's uncovered, meaning she hasn't been taught. She doesn't know anything. He's not studied to find himself approved. Read that line again, verse five. Verse five. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. She dishonoreth her teacher. Because she's un with her head uncovered. Meaning there's no understanding there. That's why it dishonors his head. So if you cover Christ, meaning you have no understanding. And if you don't give understanding to your, your doctrine, you're going to be dishonored. Because I mean, somebody's going to put holes in your doctrine. Somebody's easy to dis, 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 dis bump, debunk your doctrine. That's all it means. Read. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. As she was shaven, as she was in sin. All it is going into is being in sin. That's all it's talking about. All right, so now we know what the head is. So we know what the head of every prophet is always Christ, right? Let's go back to Revelation 1, verse 14. Revelation 1, verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So now we're going to deal with his hairs and white like wool. So if your head is Christ, what could your hairs be? Let's go to Genesis 25, verse 25. Genesis 25, verse 25. Uh -huh. And the first came out red, all over like in hairy garments. A what garment? Hairy garment. A hairy garment. Two synonymous things. Hair and garment. That's what it means. Let's prove it. Your hair is your garment, means your doctrine. Let's back that up. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 9. This, 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 let's go deeper on what the hair is. All right, read. Wisdom of Solomon 4, verse 9. Uh huh. But wisdom is the gray hair unto men. But wisdom is the what? Gray hair unto men. Gray hair. Wisdom is the gray hair unto teachers. Read. And an unspotted life is old age. And a, and a doctrine without blemish is what? In old age. Is of old age. That's what it's talking about. That's what the hair is, your doctrine. If you don't believe it, let's go to 2 Maccabees 15, verse 12. Went on nice. 2 Maccabees 15, verse 12. Uh -huh. And this was his vision, that Onias, who had been high priest, uh -huh. a virtuous and a good man. Onias, a virtuous and good man. Reverend in conversation. Reverend in conversation, I mean, with, he was teaching the word of God. Gentle in condition, uh -huh. well spoken also, mm -hmm. and exercised from a child in all points of virtue, holding up his hands, prayed for the whole body of the Jews. Verse 13. Verse 13. This done, in like manner, there appeared a man with gray hairs. Okay. And exceeding glorious, who was of a wonderful and excellent majesty. See, wonderful and excellent was the king. Gray hair. We just said it was wisdom. That's what it's talking about. That's what it's talking about. The gray hair is the wisdom. So we saw this man with gray hair that had much wisdom. That's what it's talking about. Let's go back to Revelation. So his head, your head of this prophet is Christ. So his mind was on Christ and his hairs. His doctrine was what? Revelation 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. White is purity. Wool isn't his sheep. Isn't the Lord's sheep called Israel. He said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he said that the, the people of my, 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 
my pastor, basically what I'm saying is the, the, the Lord's flocks are sheep. So if the sheep, what is their hair? The hair of sheep is what? What's the hair of sheep, Miles? The hair of sheep is the understanding. The hair of sheep is wool. What is the hair of sheep? The hair of sheep is wool. The hair of sheep is wool. He's right, it's understanding. But the hair of sheep is wool. But the hair of the sheep is pure wool. I hope y'all see that. The hair of the sheep is the pure wool. So if the understanding is the hair, so read that verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, mm -hmm. as white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Said his eyes, being the eyes means you're a seer. Right? Understanding the word. Okay, let's deal with the parallel version. Let's go to Isaiah 1 18. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now and let us reason together. Mm -hmm. Saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet. Your sins be as scarlet. What color is scarlet? Red, right? Okay. I want you to remember red. Read. They shall be as white as snow. Why would your sins be now white as snow? You be made pure. Why? Because you're now with your eyes, you're going back to read the scriptures and you're understanding spiritual breakdown. That's why he said, come reason. Read. Though they be red like crimson. Be what? Like what? Red like crimson. They shall be what? They shall be as wool. They shall be as wool. That's what he's talking about. Go back to Revelations 1.14 and read that again. What's the wool? Be the house of Israel. The Lord's sheep. That's why you need a shepherd. Revelations 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. You just said your eyes are red, your sins would be red as crimson. How would you know what sin you're in? Unless you're reading the word of God. Let's go to Genesis 49 and 12. Genesis 49 and 12. Genesis 49 verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. Red with wine. Wine is doctrine. And his teeth white with milk. Teeth, your teaching will be plain understanding of the Bible. Simple understanding of the Bible. What babes can ingest. Those who are new in the spirit or new in the word can ingest milk. Newborn babes. You have to be born again. So the teacher you're going to learn that time going to have milk in his mouth. Mean in his teeth, meaning he's teaching you milk so you can understand the words of God. Let's go back to Revelation 1, verse 14. Revelation 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, mm -hmm. as white as snow. As white as snow. So now what else we got? Purge with his sock. Let's deal with Christ in the, transfigur and, and, and the transfiguration. Let's go to Mark 9. It said his raiment. Because I remember they said something about Christ's raiment is white as snow. Mark 9, verse 2 and 3. Mark 9, verse 2. And after six days, Jesus taketh him with Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up to an high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. Verse 3. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow. Exceeding what? White as snow. Oh, so his raiment, his doctrine became shiny, the light. So his, his doctrine is the light. And what? So as no fuller on earth can white them. So it was no other doctrine that could beat that. It's the doctrine of doctrine. It's the pure understanding. That's what that means. Go back to Revelations. White as snow means the pure understanding. It's not talking about hair color or hair texture. It's talking about pure understanding. Go back. Read Revelation 1 verse 14. Revelations 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow, uh -huh. and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Right. Verse 15, and his feet... So we went over feet earlier, means his path, but this person, this prophet's path was what? And his feet like unto fine brass. Fine brass. So is brass gold? No, right? So what does it mean? Because God said he will make it. Let's go to, let's go to it. Let's go to Isaiah 13 and 12. Let's see what God said. This is what God wants. Does he God want brass or God want gold? Let's read that. Isaiah 13 verse 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold. So God said he will make a man, a teacher, more precious than what? Than fine gold. Fine gold, not fine brass. Read. 
even a man than a golden wedge of Ophir. Then a man of a uh, uh, golden wedge of Ophir, a teacher of the golden wedge of Ophir. Let's get more on his brass, right? Let's go to Hiram. Let's deal with Hiram, All right? Let's go to uh, 1 Kings 7, 14. Let's find out what brass is. All right, so now we know what gold is. God wants you gold. But let's find out what the brass is. They said it has foot. The feet of the color of brass is burning the furnace, right? So let's deal with the brass. What's the brass? First Kings 7, verse 14. Come on. He was a widow's son. So this is Hiram out of Tyree. He was a widow's son. Of the tribe of Naphtali. Mm -hmm. And his father was a man of Tyree. Uh -huh. And a worker in brass. This is what brass is. Read. And he was filled with wisdom. Wisdom is brass. Read. And understanding. And understanding is brass. His understanding of, of Hiram of Tyre understanding was brass. Read. And cunning to work all works in brass. All works in brass. Read. And he came to King Solomon and wrote all his works. So he brought his teachings on to King Solomon. His knowledge and understanding of brass, his level was brass. It wasn't gold, it was brass. Go back to Revelations chapter 1 verse 14. Revelations 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. I got another one for brass. Let's go to Ezekiel 22, 18. Ezekiel 22 verse 18. Son of man. Teacher, capital S, son of man, right? As I said earlier, read. The house of Israel is to me become dross, as they are all brass. They are all brass. That means they work gold. Read. And tin. And tin. And iron. Keep reading. And lead. And lead. So they were base metals. They were not strong metals. They're not gold. Read. In the midst of the furnace, they are even the dross of silver. They're even the dross of silver, but they still not gold. So the prophet that was seen in, in Revelations, his foot, his path was brass. And he says right here that Israel became brass. So that means they had low understanding. Go back to Revelations. Revelations 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So his head was on Christ. He, he, had, he had understanding like the pure wool of Israel. He had the pure understanding, right? His eyes was a flame of fire. fire. When, okay, so now we're going to deal with the eyes as a flame of fire. Fire is teaching the word of God. Let's go to James 3 and 6. Flame. James chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Even so the tongue is a little member. The boast of great things, behold, how great a matter a little fire can lift. Mm -hmm. Verse 6 And the tongue is a fire The tongue is a what? A fire Flame of fire Tongue is a fire Read A world of iniquity a world, And it could be a world of sin So is the tongue among our members The tongue is among our members That it defileth the whole body Whole body of, the, of, of, of Israel And setteth on fire the course of nature uh -huh. And it is set on fire of hell So fire is the teaching of the word of God That's what we're talking about your tongue what you're teaching, okay? That is what it is. It's proof. First Chronicles. Let's go with David when David gave the commandment. First Chronicles 14 and 12. Let's see when David taught the commandments what that meant. First Chronicles 14 verse 12. Uh -huh. And when they had left their gods there, David gave a commandment and they were burned with fire. They were burned with fire, meaning the words. He gave the commandment and they were burned with fire. I know you can sit back and say, well, no, he was burning their idols with fire. That's what they were doing. They were giving up their gods and they were burning their gods. And that's not what it says. That's not what it says. Read it again. Verse 12. And they had left their gods there. So they, he taught them. There was a debate. They left their understanding and did what? David, David gave a commandment. David gave the command, gave a commandment. And they were burned with fire. And they were burned with the word of God. That's what the fire is. All right. Let's go to Exodus 3 and 2. Let's deal with Moses in a fire, in a burning bush. Exodus 3 verse 2. Uh-huh. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. In a what? Flame of fire. <laughs> 
I, didn't we just have earlier in, in, in Deuteronomy 4 about him speaking out of the bush? He reminded them. Read it again. Verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame. Go back. Yeah, go here. Yeah, Verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Because you got to remember, the Bible says that the Bible says that God is a consuming fire. So this prophet, because the bush is a tree, a tree is a prophet. So this particular bush was not consumed. All right, read verse three. And Moses said, "I will now turn aside and see this great sight." Why the bush is not burned. Why was this bush not burned? Why was it not consumed? Verse 4. And when the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. Mm -hmm. And he said, Here am I. Uh-huh. And with it, so so <laughs> Moses reading the word of God, this is what God said. Verse 5. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. Put thy shoes off thy feet. Forget that doctrine. Shoes are garment, part of clothing. Take them off your feet. And what? For the place whereon thy standest is holy ground. We just read that again in Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. He said the same thing. It's the doctrine. Now let's go back to Revelations 1 and 14 because we're almost done with this thing. So I hope you get an understanding of what the depiction of Christ is. Right? Revelation 1 verse 14. Revelation 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Burned in a furnace. Let's go to the prophets that got burned in the furnace with Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel 3 verse 26 and 27. Daniel chapter 3 verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fire be furnace and spake unto Shadrach, Mezach, Mishayak, Mishayak and Abde Abednego, mm -hmm. ye servants of the Most High ye God, servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Sh Sh Shadrach, Mishayak, Shadrach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. So here is a debate that's about to go down. Read. 27. Verse 27. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, gathered, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. So that doctrine that they had had no power on them. That fire that they had, that, that, that God that they tried to pull, had no effect on these prophets. Read. Nor was an hair of their head signed. They singed. So the hair on their head weren't even singed. Their understanding weren't even bothered. They weren't even affected by this, this this debate, read. Neither were their coats changed. Coat is a garment. They didn't have to change their garment. They didn't have to change and, oh, well, I see what he's saying and change your doctrine up. Their doctrine stayed strong, read. Nor the smell of fire had passed on them. No, the smell of fire passed on them. And what did Nebuchadnezzar say? Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word. It changed the king's word. So he changed his doctrine. That teacher had to change his doctrine. Read. Then and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Except their what? Own god. There you have it. Isaiah 48 and 10, because I got to give myself my two, two precepts. So let's go to Isaiah 48 and 10. Let's see what the furnace of affliction. Isaiah 48 and 10. We're going to go there. Isaiah 48 verse 10. Behold, I have refined thee, and not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. So he's talking about those who, for his name's sake, who's teaching this law. He's telling you that I have put you in this situation, this furnace of affliction. Let's find out what this furnace of affliction is. Go to Sirach 2 and 5. Burn in the furnace is what we're talking about right now. This is the prophet that was burned in the furnace. 2 and 5. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 2, verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So we know fire is what you're teaching. So the fire is a teaching. So gold is tried by the fire, by the teaching. When you're debating with different teachers and trying to get this stuff done and teaching and, pro and prophesying and preaching, that's the fire. 
and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity because they're gonna be people that's gonna not agree with what you're saying. That's adversity. But you're gonna win them over. That's what he's talking about. Let's go back to Revelations 1 and verse 14. I think we verse 15 and we can close this out. Revelations chapter 1 verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. His voice the sound of many waters. The word of God. We just went over the, what the voice was and said many waters. So many doctrines. His voice can destroy many doctrines. That's what it's talking about. He knew a lot of doctrines and know how to defeat the doctrines. Because of the word of God. That's all it's talking about. So. I hope we're going to read it from 12 down. I'm going to read from 12 down. And let's get the full understanding. We're going to close out with today's class. I know it was long, a little bit longer, but I hope you got the understanding. Read that again from verse 12. Revelations 1 verse 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Mm -hmm. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Again, golden candlesticks again. If you go down to verse 20 with seven different churches, it means seven different understandings, seven different doctrines, right? Read. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. The Son of Man is a teacher, a prophet. So it's a big essence. So it was a prophet that was speaking the doctrine of Christ. Read. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. A garment is a doctrine. The foot is your path, which is also the doctrine. Down to his foot. Read. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. The golden girdle was his understanding. On it is in his mind. Girt the, 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 the loins of your mind. That's what the girdle's for. So his understanding was golden. Read. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So any prophet, his head is Christ. And his hair, being wool... His hair is his understanding. And being wool, being he's a child of Israel. And, and the Israel is God's sheep, right? So his hair was like the wool. So hair is sheep's hair. The wool is sheep's hair. So if Israel is, is the, uh, the pastor of the flock of Israel is sheep, metaphorically, their hair is wool. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his white as snow, meaning he was pure. And his eyes were a flame of fire, as we read in in um, Isaiah 118 was the sins were as scarlet and you see that you see the sins and his flame of fire is the teaching right so his eyes he's what he's seeing the sins because he's going through the scriptures and and his eyes were as a flame of fire his eyes are a flame of fire the flame of fire is what he's teaching read and his feet read Verse 15, and his feet like unto fine brass. And his feet, his path is on the fine brass. His teacher wasn't gold, his teacher was fine brass. But he had understanding brass nonetheless. Read. As if they burn in a furnace. As if he burned in a furnace, furnace of adversity. As if he burned in a furnace of adversity, meaning he was in different battles with the doctrines. Read. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Because of these, these battles, he now knows many doctrines. Now his voice is the, the doctrine of many waters. He knows many doctrines of his Bible because he's battled through these doctrines. I hope you glean from this and I hope you understand what Revelations 1, 11 through 15 was talking about. I hope you understand. If you have any questions, any precepts to add or debunk, leave them, leave them below or write me at Yohanan at eldersofisrael.net or eldersofisrael at eldersofisrael.net. Dot net. Until next time, this is Hidden Matter. I'm King Johan and this is Prince Miles. And we say Shalom. Shalom.